I'm your show host, Yvonne E.L. Silva. My mission is to uplifting the spirit of humanity, and I do that by showcasing amazing women who have risen typically from some sort of tragedy to triumph, from a point of chaos to confidence, risen to significant success, and are now making a huge contribution to their community and globally. And as a female founder and entrepreneur myself, or certified executive coach, I've helped thousands of people find excellent career choices, supported senior women to excel in their leadership, and my focus especially is on confidence. So today, I work with women entrepreneurs, women leaders who are ready to expand their business, to flourish, to engage their team, grow their business with ideal clients, have more sales for a sustainable business that is fun because we can have balance as female entrepreneurs and be great role models for our children, as my guest today will prove. So today, I'm delighted to be joined by the founder and CEO of Wings Media, Melinda Whitstock. Hello, Melinda. To be with you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm delighted that you could be my first guest for this year because I really wanted to kick the session off the season with someone who I know already to be a rock star. I mean, I advertise this as a powerhouse. Yeah, as a powerhouse session. For those who are interested in serial entrepreneurship, you are doing so much more. But I think, you know, part of the session today will focus on your your work as being an acclaimed podcaster, because you bring such deep insights in business and uh, podcasting, the whole world of media. And I know you to be an advocate in particular of conscious communication and leveraging entrepreneurship for social good. And that's what I want to focus more on this year. So thank you for joining me. Oh, now, well, it's this, great to be with you. Yeah. This is um, an opportunity both for, you know, learning more about you, the entrepreneur, as well as sharing some of your deep insights, particularly around that topic of profiting from podcasting. So I'm going to go through your your full bio in case those who are jumping on the call because of my last-minute Facebook post, my live post, haven't had a chance to learn about you. You have an, a pretty impressive bio, I have to say. Um, so, you know, certainly as a serial entrepreneur, you know, you've built businesses, I think four now, um, businesses to, you know, six, seven, and eight figures. You're now building your fifth which is uh, the one that we want to hear about today. The innovative podcast network and audience engagement platform, Wings Media. And I know you to be an acknowledged visionary, both in tech, in media, in mobile platforms, in social content. And I've watched as you've hosted your fast-growing Wings of Inspired Business podcast. I think I was number... 15 or 16 of your interviews, and then again uh, last year as well. So it's delightful to have the reciprocal opportunity for interviewing. And also that the Wings podcast just got ranked number 8 out of 20 by Entrepreneur Magazine just this January. So congratulations on that. (laughs) Thank you. Yes, it was great to be in such amazing company, like with Tim Ferriss, and Lewis Howe's School of Greatness, NPR's Guy Raz. I, I was, it was, Christmas came early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, well, when I saw that article, so. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice, um, a nice uh, addition. I mean, you have such a, a rich history already. I mean, you've been helping business owners and entrepreneurs um, throughout your career, and particularly recently by launching Um, your own magnetic and profitable podcast, and now looking to help others do that. I was particularly impressed because I know you are a passionate advocate both for women entrepreneurs and for this topic of, you know, conscious capitalism, which I truly believe is the way that all businesses will be flourishing as we go forward. I mean, we really do have to help other people, help our community. Um, I don't like the term give back because I think it 
it sounds like we've taken something away. I think it's about paying it forwards and really investing wisely in how we build our business so that there is that social enterprise, that conscious capitalism element. So I know that you have um, the the Wings platform. You also have luxury retreats. So I wasn't quite lucky enough to get out to one last year. The Wings have empowered women um, uh, retreats. Um, but just sort of going back, you've got this deep history um, formerly an award-winning journalist and TV anchor for the BBC. And I want to hear more about that because I know that you have grown audiences massively in all of the work that you've done, you know, 20 million, 3 million, you know, different numbers I've seen. Um, and certainly as the um, the CEO and Verifeed also of one of your other founding companies, Verifeed, um, that social intelligence platform is very creative looking at return on authenticity from social media engagement. So we'll, we'll look at that as well. And then just to top it off, um, in terms of a more on a personal note, um, I know you are a practitioner of meditation and yoga and you know, visualization, gratitude, intention setting, all of those pieces that help us to be truly successful in life. You travel a lot, all kinds of exotic places, you know, the Amazon rainforest, Richard Branson's Neck Island, and um, somehow still managed to fit in time to be a loving mom to two, ne- two teenagers and a golden retriever. <laughs> and, you see, <laughs> and you do comedy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm busy, yeah. busy, busy girl for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking time to join me today. So let's um, let's dive right in because there's so much I could be asking you about. Um, I know you have a moonshot, though. So can we just uh, sort of frame everything with what your moonshot is? I think that's really intriguing for our audience listeners because most of my audience is women. Yeah. So a couple of years ago when I launched the podcast, I set my moonshot to invest $10 million in female-founded businesses that were socially conscious, like just as you say, giving forward or paying it forward. I believe women are uniquely suited to solving a lot of the world's biggest problems, the most intractable challenges using entrepreneurship. I think entrepreneurs are, by definition, very creative. And I think when we apply business, and we create value, we can do amazing things. And so um, I, I just, I believe that women also are at our best when we're showing up for each other meaningfully, like we're opening doors for each other, connections, we're helping women find confidence, as you do, Yvonne, but, but also when we buy from each other, when we promote each other. And when we invest in each other. So I, I just kind of wanted to be the change that I wanted to see in the world just by living that and encouraging other women to do the same. Yeah, absolutely. I think Gandhi got that right for sure. So you certainly are that role model. Absolutely. You have a really interesting background. And I don't know if you would describe your story necessarily as rising from chaos to confidence, which is you know what many of my listeners have done. Um, however, you know, I am intrigued to learn if you could tell me a little bit about your life, you know, what was your life like growing up, early career successes, um, you know, if you had challenging times, I'm kind of intrigued to find out a little bit more about, you know, what some of those were and, and, and what some of those turning points were. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think we all, it's just the human condition. We all have our challenges and they're all unique and perhaps different to us. I mean, Mm -hmm. I I think I always had entrepreneurial DNA because when I was five, I went door to door with my black lab, like as one does, knocking on doors, demanding people prepay for my show. (laughs) And my show involved running, doing dance and running through sprinklers and like it had candy and it had, you know, (laughs) it had all sorts of different elements, you know, I don't know what a five-year-old, you know, I guess I was almost six, you know, comes up with, but I remember coming home and saying to my dad, you know, where can we get a hundred shares? He's like, what? And I I made a hundred dollars 
Um, um, and I think my black lab assisted me. He was sort of my enforcer, I guess, you know, a little snide growl here and there and people paid up. So I don't know. I, I've always been entrepreneurial and always been very creative and, and, and whatnot. But I also grew up with parents that were um, amazingly talented but desperately unhappy with each other. And there was a huge kind of cataclysmic divorce around the time that I was six. And, you know, you realize the impact that these things have kind of much later in life when you find yourself with the kind of limiting beliefs or worse, replicating some of the things that you spent your whole life trying to avoid. So, so here I am, born to these parents, my mom, an Olympic figure skater, my dad, a, a, a star stockbroker who actually did the Coca-Cola IPO, and they divorced. My dad lost everything. So we went from having money to having nothing. And of course, that filled my brain with all kinds of negative money stories and all kinds of stuff that I've had to really work hard to just let go of and clear, you know, on my own kind of, um, I call it a Shiro's journey and, and, you know, trek into uh, consciousness. But where I replicated it is I ended up marrying a man that was the worst combination of my parents. I, I found myself <laughs> with a very successful business and these two beautiful children, but I was verbally abused and for many years. And, you know, when we talk about confidence, it totally destroyed my confidence. But it happened in a drip-drip a sort of way that was actually impacting on my business at the time and, and um you know, now with, I guess, 2020 hindsight, I can look back at it and I can see so clearly and I think, who was that person? Like, where did the girl who had all this confidence going door to door demanding prepayment for her show, like, where, where the hell did she go? Because in around 2013, I was in a fetal position. I had $4 in the bank. I, my confidence was at an all time, like, it was just destroyed. I'd lost all sense of myself. I, you know, suddenly I was a single mom with a failing business because <laughs> I was a mess. And coming back from that is actually, I think, a tremendous gift. I think what happened didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I think that's true when, when, when we have these challenges. We all have different ones. Um, like, but try not to marry an alcoholic narcissist, you know, like... <laughs> Try not to do that, everybody. It really well, sucks. And so, <laughs> my, I'm I'm laughing with you because my very last guest was a lady um, in Calgary here, Rasha El Dib, whose sister was tragically murdered at 22 in a domestic oh. abuse situation. And so, the last show, uh, actually, the one before last, I I I was my own show on December 24th. Um, but the one before that, she kindly shared. You know what? Is, what she had learned about what to look out for in a potentially abusive relationship, so you don't get into it before, um, you know, before you've realized it. Especially for young girls, she's teaching teaching young girls in in grades ten, eleven, and twelve what to look out for and how to get out of that type of relationship. Oh my goodness, that's such valuable work because I mean, I think if you're at all empathetic, narcissists know that they there. There's a certain type of woman who is very successful and very empathetic. In fact, empathy became one of the topics of my comedy routine at Caroline's on Broadway, right? And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I actually opened that show by saying, God, you know, it's sometimes hard, like walking down the street in New York to know what, what's my feelings and, and what's somebody else's, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, so yeah. when you have that degree of sensitivity and empathy, it's such a wonderful gift. And yet, it you can be really targeted by a narcissist. It's what they feed off of. It's like they're en energy vampires. And so yep. I think there are a lot of women, um, you know, entrepreneurs who are very successful, very driven. They're going to go do big things in the world. And if they're also really empathetic, they can attract that kind of energy um, and that type of mate into their lives quite easily without being aware. Yeah, I've definitely seen that. And as I talked with, um, actually, my, my, my girl, girl who's going to be my next guest coming up, um, you know, her background is, is quite diverse. I don't want to um, mix these two interviews. But what I said to her after I heard her story was, it's kind of like when you pull the elastic band back in a catapult. The further you can pull it back, 
really seems to be the you know equal to or or you know a very good signal of how far someone can actually go and and in her case as well i mean in seven less than seven years to have accomplished what you've accomplished i think i mean kudos you know big kudos because yeah it's really it's interesting because all the seeds of everything i'm doing now were planted you know, I mean, everything. And in fact, I, I love this quote from Steve Jobs, where he said that it's really easy, like we're in 2020, so we can have 2020 hindsight. When you look back on your life, you can see all these seemingly unconnected things, but they're all there for a reason. And when they combine at a certain stage of, of, of your life, when you get into alignment with all these different experiences and um, different businesses of mine who I, I, that, that I, I feel now were kind of like my lab for what I'm doing now and my life yeah. experience and it's sort of every single thing that I have lived and experienced, the good and the bad, it yeah. all seems to be converging right now in a really lovely way. Well, that's my word for, for 2020 as well, actually, is alignment. Um, because, you know, certainly when I... When I think about last last year, I pulled away from um, a couple of relationships where I felt that they were you know, more one-sided and not uh, where I wasn't feeling valued, um, and that you know that was very purposeful to then start focusing on the women and wisdom media brand. <laughs> um, so you know, I I too am drawing on entrepreneurial experiences when I was. I was the one who was out offering kindly to do some walk, uh, dog walking for one of the seniors down the road, a lady who had broken her ankle. And when I went to the door the first day to pick up her little chihuahuas, she said, well, how much am I paying you, my dear? And it was like, oh, okay, well, I think I charged sixpence or something, which doesn't even exist anymore. But, um, but the light bulb went on, and that was me, again, you know, knocking on t- Doors asking people if they wanted their dogs walked. <laughs> but isn't that, that nice, though? Well. Isn't, that nice, isn't that nice that she did that for you, though, right? And I think that's a great example of how women can really help each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and what I love about watching you, because, I mean, I have... I, I, I know it sounds spooky sometimes when people say it to me. I've been watching you. Um, but <laughs> since we, we met up at Maverick Camp a couple of years ago... Um, the uh, opportunity to to watch some of your blossoming and unfolding at a very rapid rate has been incredible. So I am curious to, you know, figure out, you know, what were the takeaways from that divorce experience? And then I want to move on to, you know, how you've leveraged your past to bring those insights into your current life and, and where that's leading you now. Well, I think the biggest thing really is that experience um, it, it, it was, it was so painful and so dramatic. It sent me on a, a journey, um, into consciousness and it really began. I mean, the, the first thing that I did, I remember I was in a Barnes and Noble or something and I, this book, you know, sometimes you're just walking by something and you sort of like book jumps out of the shelf of, you know, at you. And it was a book about gratitude and I bought it and I started doing this very deep dive gratitude pro. Uh, process where Mm -hmm. um, at my worst moment I was doing like a two-hour gratitude practice every day like just finding things finding people finding past experiences just finding things to be grateful for and and it it led me into all sorts of different kind of discovery and modalities um, of how I could unearth and let go and release or surrender any limiting beliefs that were, you know, my subconscious icebergs and let those go and, you know, start living a life that was much more focused on intention and visualization and inspiration rather than the grind, you know, how to be in the power of the now, how to be in flow, living in alignment, as you say, um, and, and that work has been the single biggest thing that's helped me in business. It's helped me in my relation. I'm in a very happy relationship right now as well. You know, really great relationship with my kids, all of those things. But I put all of that down to doing that consciousness work. Um, And so a a practical example of it is now, rather than having a to-do list, for example, 
I have an intentions list. And my intentions list is, is, is very kind of almost structured work in a way. I, I meditate every morning. And in my meditation, I ask for inspiration from, you know, uh, the divine, you know, the universe, God, whatever your belief system is. And I ask and, and, and say out loud that I'm open to receiving it. I get these amazing downloads. And then, of course, I put them into action. And so my action steps are about visualizing the result, not, not constraining it by trying to use my ego to figure out the how. I don't know mm. how. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. do. I have my own version of what I think is the right way to go. Um, but I, I just, I operate in a totally different way than I used to. Yeah, that sounds, it's, it sounds um, uh, quite akin to the process I went through about four years ago where I basically took three months, three months away from my business because I found out um, my old business because I was not serving my ideal clients. I was chasing big contracts and I burned out doing it. Um, and when I came back, I you know, rebranded, refreshed, rejuvenated, and um, a lot of the you know, following things that happened, particularly my best-selling book that, uh, that launched, you know, the content for that literally came through downloading in the morning, you know, 5 a.m., half an hour of meditation and journaling, and then an hour of writing, and it just flowed. It was um, quite magical, and I, I picked it up. I read a chapter the other day, or read a segment the other day, and I was thinking, wow, this is really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that interesting? When we become a channel, like when we, when we allow our egos to get out of the way, and we yeah. just open ourselves up to being a channel, because yeah. everything is there. Like, we live in a very abundant world. Um, and this is the other big switch for me, is going from kind of scarcity thinking into abundance thinking. There's, there's really enough of everything and I, I i do believe that our minds you know what what we can conceive we can achieve and what we're thinking um uh, and what we're thinking subconsciously that we don't even know we're thinking can be driving us so yeah. so this is this is a huge thing and this is why my podcast wings of inspired business the word inspired is very important there because we really focus on that intersection between personal growth and business growth. So they're the same thing. And I, I joke all the time that if you want therapy, just become an entrepreneur because it's yeah. going to throw <laughs> all, like it's going to challenge you in six ways from Sunday and all kinds of different ways that you didn't even know. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to poke at whatever is in your subconscious that you need to retire or release or let go of. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it'll surface all of your biggest, you know, doubts, worries, and fears along as, along with some of your greatest joys and amazing co colleagues and connections. And, you know, that sort of um, downloading and asking process, that was what confirmed that you were going to be my guest today. Because <laughs> I, I, asked, I asked for an amazing guest to just magically show up. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that funny how that happens? I, I find that those sorts of things happen to me increasingly now. Like, you know you're in alignment when you start having synchronicities like that. The right person shows up at the right time. And I find that that happens on my podcast. Like, I, I, it's almost like it's a, a great kind of personal mastermind for me. Like, I'll be working on something in my business or I'll be having some sort of challenge. And the right woman shows up on the right day. Like, you talk about, it, like, almost exactly what I was working on. And I, I have an automated calendar. I never know who I'm interviewing, like, in advance. I look at my calendar, and I'm like, oh, I'm interviewing this person. Okay, that's great. And then they always end up being the right person. Yep. Yep. That's how the universe works. We don't have to worry about how. We just have to know what it is and set an intention that has positive energy behind it. And when you're doing good in the world as well, um, you know, that conscious business piece about lifting other women as you're rising, you know, it doesn't come from a place of scarcity. It's a generosity mindset. And yes, you have other entrepreneurs on your show, obviously, because that's what makes it interesting, um, just like I do. And, and at the same time, we each have such a varied background. Nobody has your unique DNA and can do exactly what you do in the way that you do it, right? I mean, I might be mm -hmm. hosting this show today, but I wasn't a journalist. 
I didn't work for the BBC. I didn't launch numerous successful, you know, media tech and mobile apps that predict data analytics. Or you know, I mean, <laughs> I haven't done any of those things, <laughs> right? I spent, you know, 25 years working in you know senior HR roles and then in coaching. And um, a lot of it has been consulting and uh, working with words is a passion. Um, so yes, well, we both speak and we both have a radio show. But there's well, we all have money. we all have a, a different path, right? And no one's path yeah. is better than another path. It's it's your yeah. path. Like we all come here in our life suits to learn specific lessons and to contribute in certain ways, right? And right. and no one path is better than another. I don't I don't believe. I think they're just different. And I think when it comes to podcasting, I, I mean, you, you made a, a, a point for me very elegantly that I always say to everybody is that your voice is your value. And everybody has a million-dollar message. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a unique perspective. And I love podcasting because it is just a beautiful and intimate way to really connect. And I, I've always thought that the best the best content is actually conversation and connection. And so when you're listening to a podcast, you feel like almost like a fly on the wall um, because people are very open and it's just a really, it's a conversation that has such depth. And so, you know, if I put on my marketing hat for a moment, I mean, the best marketing is really about know, like, and trust. Um, We buy from people. we We don't buy from logos. We buy from people that we know and we like and we trust. And so podcasting, again, is one of the best ways for anybody who's um, a business, you know, like an entrepreneur, a business owner, a thought leader, um, you know, any kind of professional, any sort of person, any a hobbyist, anybody, really anybody, um, can create a really magnetic podcast that creates value and serves and connects them with people um, who can really benefit um, from their unique insights. And so this is one of the reasons why I'm launching a podcast network and the way that I'm doing it as well, because I just think, gosh, how better than to foster a way for people to share their uniqueness, their unique abilities, their unique value, and to do so in a way that boosts global consciousness. And so that's all about my fifth business. Right. Well, Profiting from podcasting, um, you know, that certainly was one of the focus areas for this uh, show today. And I read a a really interesting article that you wrote the other day. I think it was um, Medium that I saw Mm -hmm. it. Um, And you're talking about some of the numbers and about this topic of, you know, blogging, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So just refresh me on what those numbers are. Well, you know, there's a lot of people who think that podcasting is, like, busy and crowded and they miss the boat. And I will say, no, you have not, because there are about 800,000 podcasts in the world right now, and those numbers are growing pretty fast. But Mm -hmm. contrast that to 500 million blogs. You know, so if you didn't start a blog in 2004, do you wish you did, because that's about where we're at in podcasting. I still think podcasting is relatively in its infancy. I think there's so much innovation. And I also believe that just like the dot-com rush, you know, where, right, everybody was trying to get their, you know, their, you know, pets.com or like, you know, I don't know, finance.com or <laughs> whatever it was, right? In those, in those, we're in the same stage with audio branding right now as well. Some people call it sonic branding. But podcasters have a unique advantage in this world where Google increasingly and Amazon and everyone is moving towards voice recognition and voice search, voice SEO, um, because people crave, in our society right now, crave that intimate connection that comes through voice. So I, I, I really believe that podcasting is very much in its infancy, um, and it will run things like, you know, voice Tech, for instance, will run things like Internet of Things, will run marketing, will run a whole bunch of different things. So if you have a podcast, you're you're in the lead. <laughs> yeah, well, it certainly sounds as though you've been really 
um, well, I know that you have been really successful with your acclaimed podcast, Wings of Inspired Business, and then you also have the 10X Together Couplepreneurs. So when we talk about monetizing your podcast, um, let's see if we can dig into maybe, you know, five or six tips of things that perhaps the audience members haven't, haven't, aren't aware of or haven't tried themselves yet. I mean, how can you really make it a business? Right. So when I work with my clients, I do these 12-week intensives to get business owners a podcast that's launched in 12 weeks. One of the first things that we do is focus deep down into what their strategic why is. Is the podcast to help them grow their business or is the podcast the beginning of a different business? But podcasting is a business. If you think about it like a business, uh, that's the first step in making money from it. Um, mm-hmm. The other really vital thing is knowing who your tribe is, knowing who your listeners are, and really understanding what their problems are that you're solving. Because if you solve problems for your audience, there are a whole series of ancillary or related products that you can grow from that podcast. Because you've grown a tribe, you've grown a loyal community with your podcast, those people want more from you. They might want more of what you're providing. And so there are myriad ways to monetize a podcast. But it's very important, first off, to really understand why you're doing it um, and, and where that fits in terms of like, what, you, what kind of money do you want from it. So um, if you want me to go through a number of different revenue streams, say, for instance, with Wings of Inspired Business, um, I have about five different revenue streams from that. And and one of them is an obvious one. It's sponsorship. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about where people go wrong in trying to get sponsors. Sponsors is really about making sure that your audience is pre-qualified for whatever a sponsor is selling. If you have an engaged community and you know who those people are and you know as much as possible about them, like demographics, psychographics, like interests, hobbies, habits, those kinds of things, if you have that and if you can figure out um, as much as possible about your audience, it's not just about having big numbers. It's about being able to persuade a sponsor that your audience is uniquely qualified for whatever that sponsor um, may be selling, right? It's as yeah. simple as that. It's like true of anything in marketing. And so I think a lot of podcasters go wrong where they think, oh, well, I'll just have sponsorship, but they haven't really thought through that piece of where the sponsor can add value to their audience and where the audience is the right fit for a sponsor. So sponsorship has been very um, important for me. And, you know, when I, the, the, the podcasting network, a, a really, really big problem that we're solving with that is we're the first to actually provide listener data um, to, like, an unprecedented degree. Right now, podcasters get their download data. That's all they know. They don't really know who people are, right? So it makes it really hard to monetize. So we will be providing all the demographics and the audience, psychographics, the interests, habits, influence, a whole bunch of other things like that. It's going to make it much, much easier with smaller numbers to land really major sponsors and make some significant money from it. Um, Some of the other ways that I make money from podcasting are with affiliate deals. So, for instance, if any of my guests have a, a promotion or a business or a service or a product that they're selling... I become an affiliate because as a, pod, as a podcaster, I've provided a platform for them to basically sell their business to my tribe. And so if as a result of being on my podcast, they get a lot of business, um, why not reward me um, for, for providing that community for them? My community that I've built is valuable. And so often I will make affiliate income from my podcast. Um, the third way that I make money are related um, products and services. And so as a result of Wings of Inspired Business, I created a, uh, initially a, an online summit where I brought together a lot of guests um, to do trainings. And it was wonderful win-win because all the guests made money from it and I made money from it. And then that morphed into an inner circle mastermind. And then it morphed also into these luxury 
uh, retreats that I do for uh, successful female entrepreneurs. And so they're just those are just a number of different ways that I've made money from my podcast. Mm-hmm. So just curious, are you integrating your Verifeed offering as well? Because that, to me, that whole return on authenticity piece seemed to be, um, it was, at the time that I ran across it, I hadn't heard of that before. It sounded very unique. But it, it strikes me that there's an integration element there, too. Is that true? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Verifeed certainly, and all the experiences creating that company, certainly informs the current platform. Um, so essentially what we have, and we're going to be launching in the second quarter of this year, is a mobile and desktop platform for podcasters to really engage their tribe. So it's kind of an audience engagement platform is probably a good way to look at it where there are a whole series of challenges that are gamified. So gamified, for people who don't know that term, that simply um, is applying kind of game psychology um, to a non-gaming situation. So that's like, say, personal growth challenges or challenging people to rewarding and recognizing them for, at the most simple, sharing content or contributing to content or, uh, uh, you know, promoting content shaping content, through taking personal growth challenges like meditating every day or drinking enough water or going to the gym, through to the really exciting ones, our sponsored challenges, which are all about addressing the 17 UN global goals. So working with sponsors and content providers and podcasters that want to engage their audiences in going out and doing amazing things for the world. Um, and being rewarded and recognized for that. And so in kind of gamifying the audience interaction, we create um, a platform where the the podcasters and the sponsors, the the, the consumers of the content, everybody is able to engage on a really deep level. And as they engage on that level, yes, we do um, learn a lot about, you know, people who are listening. And as a result of that, Obviously, it makes it easier to monetize. And so on the authenticity piece that, that Verifeed did, I mean, I actually created an algorithm, you're right, called Return on Authenticity. And um, that very much informs, um, you know, how we will reward and recognize, you know, podcasters. We gamify their experience as well. For instance, the podcasters that, that engage their tribes most authentically will get better deals on advertising. They will get all sorts of different things. So, like, every part of this platform is gamified. Hmm. It sounds like a very unique offering. So I, I know that you've also just put out um, kind of like a, an ebook, a booklet, talking about profiting from podcasting, and that's something that is going to be uh, available to the listeners. At the um, at the end of the show, um, or you can just you can speak to the link now if you'd like. Oh yeah, it's just um, you can go to wingspodcast.com slash liftoff. Just wingspodcast.com slash liftoff, and really, it's a list of seven things that you can do to really um, profit from podcasting, engage find and engage your tribe, really give them an amazing experience. And, I, you know, again, as I say, your voice is your value. And so that million-dollar message inside you, um, how to unlock that. So it's a nice short read, but seven steps that have proved absolutely valuable for me. So, yeah, wingspodcast.com slash liftoff. Great. So overall, I mean, when you think about all of these, various experiences coming together um so your you know your experience you know starting off from even when you went off to london and you were looking for a bbc role um to today what would you say has been maybe the top three things that have really helped you to rise to success today shaped your your own wisdom and your your resilience if you like as a woman entrepreneur well, I wouldn't recommend this to everybody, but I remember as a 22-year-old correspondent on the Times of London writing about the media for a Rupert Murdoch newspaper, it really increases your confidence when you have Rupert, the proprietor, standing behind your back as you're writing your story. 
<laughs> it's a little terrifying. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think one, one of those things is really that experience of working on Fleet Street in a really competitive newspaper environment initially before I moved into television. Television is competitive too, but, um, you know, you, it, it was pretty hothouse. Like you were only as good as your last story. You were competing against 12 other national dailies. It was incredibly intense. And, and I, I don't know, I just learned really good work habits. And I think the way my brain works, I was the type of journalist that always liked to know where the story was going next. I wasn't really content just to report it. Like I wanted to go break, break big stories, you know, really uncover new trends, just very kind of visionary. In fact, that's the top of my strengths finder is, is visionary. So, um, anyway, I, that was just a, a really quite an incredible experience. I think being a technology entrepreneur, um, as well, cause that's hard. It's hard to create and innovate things out of whole cloth. So, this is the downside about the visionary piece is that you can see things that other people can't necessarily. And um, I, I'm gratified to look back and see that every single thing that I've predicted has happened. But at the time when you're out raising money, say you need to raise venture capital for a company, as I did for some of my previous ones, it's really, really hard. I remember trying to do a pitch once. It was about 2010, and I had a crowdsourcing mobile app which also very much informs my current thing. It was also very gamified. Had about 500,000 users and these really, really cool algorithms that could separate content, um, crowdsourced content, based on its relevance and reliability, right? We were actually solving the fake news problem before there was fake news. Um, <laughs> but I, I remember doing this, at that, and that's just part of the problem, right? Because it was so advanced pre-Instagram, we were doing photo sharing, you know, video sharing even. We were doing all this amazing, amazing stuff with these really fancy algorithms. And I went to pitch this VC in New York, and I did my pitch. And he said, hey, you know, Melinda, that's great. Somebody's going to do that. I'm like, what do you mean somebody's going to act? I am doing it. Like, what? Um, and he said, well, here's the thing. If you don't fit our pattern. I said, what do you mean I don't fit the pattern? That's funny because I have pattern recognition algorithms. Like, what? And I remember walking down the street in New York thinking, let's see, what's different about me? Oh, I didn't go to Stanford, Harvard, or MIT. I didn't drop out of those schools. I'm not dressed in a hoodie. I don't have a garage, so I didn't invent anything in a garage. Uh, I don't eat ramen noodles. I have too many carbs. Oh, right. I'm missing a critical body part. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. And so some of these experiences as a tech entrepreneur, as a woman tech entrepreneur, were so frustrating and so difficult. Um, not only being a little bit ahead of your time, but also being a woman, and women still only get 2% of the venture capital money, right? So th those challenging experiences or whatever, I mean, I just learned so much from that. It, it wasn't necessarily fun um, through a lot of that. Um, but, but, but huge, like a huge thing. And then I think the third thing that was really massive for me was ending up in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, uh, staring up, um, at millions of stars as one does, um, lying on a banana leaf, um, tripping out on ayahuasca, <laughs> Which, um, you know, back in 2016, I went on this trip with the Pachamama Alliance, which I'm a donor. And um, so I really believe that the Amazon rainforest is the lungs of the planet. We, I, I'm a big environmentalist. And um, anyway, I'm there. And part of the thing was taking this plant medicine. And it confronts you with anything and everything that's in your subconscious or anything that you need to get rid of. And it was such a powerful, powerful experience. My big download was really about the nature of abundance and that, that humanity, we're at our best when we're really balanced in the masculine and feminine energies. And this download that, that my whole mission was to elevate global consciousness. So that was like a huge, not only personal growth thing, but also we started the conversation talking about getting into alignment. And, uh, um, I would say that that advanced me faster, further than almost, you know, anything. And in fact, I, that was part of the comedy routine as well. And Caroline's talking about, you know, the, the, the mysteries and, and magical nature of plant medicine. Yeah. Well, it certainly is a, that, that, you know, the rainforests are, I mean, they're just such a gift to the world. I'm really hoping that there is more focus on being conscious and not, uh, 
not destroying any more of that natural abundance because it's so, so important for sure. Um, when you were talking about the, the UN, you know, one of the things that in alignment that I was looking to do was in a, number five, which is all about equality, um, is really my focus. So when I, when I wrote the book, The Words, Women and Wisdom, The Modern Art of Confident Conversations book, I did include in there a little bit about the, the UN Global Pact um, that they came up with on International Women's Day, March 8th of 2010, which is to do with the women's empowerment principles. And that their initiative at that time was all about equality means business. Um, and they came up with seven empowerment principles. They're fairly high level, and yet it does give some focus for organizations who are looking at really you know, improving that for their corporate, corporate world, uh, corporate yeah. leaders. So it's, um, it's nice that we can tie back to something that's grounding um, because those are, you know, sustainable development goals are so, so important in all of their aspects. It's not just, it's not just, you know, people, planet, profit. There's lots of other elements that feed into contributing to a worthy goal and success in business and social enterprise is a key piece of that. So I'm glad that Absolutely. you incorporated a piece about that. I'm just going to yeah. remind, remind the listeners in, in the last few minutes that we have here Oh, we had such a great conversation. I forgot I forgot to share the darling line. I mean, I had advertised it with many of the postings for today anyway, but last minute, if anyone uh, listening had a burning question for Melinda, um, Melinda, if you want to dial in, you can do so on 1-888-627-6008. So 1-888-627-6008. Two seven six zero zero eight, and I think through your sharing today, you've already shared what's on a lot of people's minds, which is you know this whole topic of profiting from podcasting. Obviously, you've been hugely successful in increasing your numbers, and when you have those numbers, then you can do almost anything on the back end if there is alignment, if there is engagement, and as you so rightly said, you know typically. In marketing, we do need to do that big deep dive into, you know, who is our ideal client, what makes them tick, all of those pieces, so that we can get the messaging right. Yeah, so you have to know your. You have to know your. Yeah, you have to know your listeners. I mean, knowing your listeners um, or viewers, if you do a video podcast, is 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 the, the the most important thing, and serving them with value because. All the money comes. So there's lots of different ways to make money if you have that piece right. Yeah, absolutely. So on that note, um, one of the things I'm going to be doing um, myself as well this year is um, revisiting my wisdom circles concept. So I'm doing it by application only so that I can also be building up um, more concrete, relevant information about the people that are interested in doing work in the wisdom circle. So basically, if you're not familiar with my concept, it's, it's talked about on my website, wordswomenandwisdom.com. And under the news tab, there's um, a beautiful circle with a variety of pairs of shoes of different heights and colors. And it's all about stepping into your power, that logo. And my, my concept is really to bring together all of my years of experience in coaching, in the mentoring that I've been doing more recently, and also in masterminding. So bringing those concepts together into a mindshare model to work in small groups of 10 with women who are wanting to significantly elevate their confidence because that's the aim of my work is helping to empower women by having more confident conversations. That's the focus of it. So check that out, wordswomenandwisdom.com slash news. And as we have talked about, Melinda has a couple of things that she wanted to offer. So certainly you can find out more about Melinda herself um, through her own website. But I think the focus for today is really about having the opportunity to download that special report, wingspodcast.com slash liftoff. And that'll get you connected with Melinda 
And then after that, there's all kinds of ways that you can stay connected and invitations that will be coming your way, depending on your interest and opportunities, that, and how fast you want to grow and how much you want to pursue success. So any final thoughts about women, success in business, social enterprise, Mm-hmm. Any of the key lessons well, you've learned? How do we wrap this up in a nice, neat little bow? You know, it's interesting. I mean, I'm about 450 episodes now into my podcast interviewing women with, you know, primarily seven, eight, and nine-figure businesses, in some cases a couple of billion-dollar unicorns, right? And you start to see the patterns that emerge of, like, what stands out in success. Each one of these women have learned how to not be a perfectionist. Like, you have to will, be willing to let yourself suck. Like, I mean, I, seriously, like, it's okay not to know. It's really important to be able to build the plane as you fly it and just keep going. Um, it's also just absolutely vital that we ask for help. Um, the one thing that I've seen a lot of women do is tend to self-isolate and perfect things, get caught in the doing and working in their business instead of on it, like and not hiring fast enough and not asking for help and and even being resistant to receiving it. And it like, you know, when you compliment someone and they say, oh, no, you know, whatever, like, you know, oh, no, like they don't even accept the compliment. So <laughs> I think uh, that I think women sometimes I, I think when we don't know our own value, that can happen. And so the biggest single challenge comes down to knowing your value, right? Um, Enough that you can be confident to be in the here and now, think abundantly, be able to give to other women and being able to receive as much as being able to give. It's so, so critical. And that's the only way you can succeed in business is being able to build a team, is to be able to ask for help, is to be able to find those, those points of leverage within your business so you're not doing it all yourself. So um, those are my big, big takeaways. And, you know, Yvonne, I want to thank you. You're doing such great work in the world. You know, uh, confidence is is the critical part um, of helping women really know their values. So thank you for all that you do. Well, I appreciate the um, acknowledgement. It's it's relieving to know that you don't have to be a perfectionist (laughs) No, because, no, it gets, um, it gets in I, the way. It gets okay. in the way. I mean, there's a, it, there's a difference between perfectionism and mastery, and I think those two things get confused. Yeah, so, like, absolutely. mastering something is, is one thing, but, like, perfectionism perfectionism is kind of fear, I think, dressed up pretty, like a little pretty pink bow on it, right, where absolutely. we're a, afraid that whatever we've done isn't good enough, that we're not enough. And, again, it comes back to not valuing ourselves enough. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, you know, 80% is, is good enough in many, so many instances. And timing, you know, the world moves at such a fast pace that if you haven't got it 80% right and you're willing to launch it and learn as you go, then you sometimes miss the opportunity. Um, and I learned yeah. that very, very early on when I worked in the, I, you know, I did work in the tech sector in, in human resources, but for an IT consulting firm. Um, And when you're doing custom software development, you don't really know what the user has in mind until you actually present them with something. And then they say, oh, no, I didn't want it to look like that. Oh, no, that's way too many layers to get to that piece of information. And so this whole iterative development process and and knowing that you could never have it 100% perfect anyway, because there's always somebody that's not going to like something, you may as well just get on with it, do it, do it to the best of your ability using your own insights, intel, and research, and then learn as you go. You learn way much more, as you found out, laying on the banana yeah. leaf. <laughs> well, yeah, but also learn from your customers. Your customers yeah. are going to be, they're, they're the ones that teach you. I, I like uh, Reed Hoffman, from who founded LinkedIn, and he said, look, if you're not embarrassed by your product, you've launched too late. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't heard that that phrase <laughs> but, but it's, it's true right because you want your customers to be co-creating with you 
Otherwise, yeah, you can create something that, so that, that nobody, yeah, otherwise you create something that nobody actually wants or they don't want it the way that, you know, I think we get so focused on our own ego of building something a certain way and it's like, it's, nah, there's more that you don't know than you do and that's okay. Yep, absolutely. Well, that's, that's part of the reason for um, relaunching the w- Wisdom Circles in 2020 and doing it in a different way. There's an application form to, to complete this time around, which will give some of that information. Um, so I'm making sure that the right groups, the right women are going in the right groups and uh, talking about the right topics. Um, you know, I've certainly been in a few different circles where the matching wasn't ideal and I didn't feel I got the value out of it with people that were, you know, with different levels of business or, different intentions and ways of uh, doing business or values. So I'm using my very uh, very experienced brain of um, hiring and matching uh, with hiring and interviewing about 6,000 people in my career to uh, bring to this Wisdom Circles concept. So it'll be um, a great tool this year. Wonderful. So, thank you very much for sharing your insights. There is a ton more wisdom coming your way. Um, I'm looking forward to learning more about the podcasting platform. So Q2 2020, um, stay tuned for more information from Melinda and her team on that. And uh, certainly wanted to thank you for your time today. Wish you an awesome 2020. I know it's kicked off well already, and it will continue to be an amazing year. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you so much for thinking of me and having me on. It's such a delight to talk to you always. Always. So in closing, you have the email, or sorry, the link, um, address, URL for Melinda's work, for booklet, uh, Profit from Podcasting. And if you'd like more information around my book, Words, Women, and Wisdom, The Modern Art of Confident Conversations, just hop over to my website, wordswomenandwisdom.com. There's a little video launch there from 2018. And there's also information under the news tab about the Wisdom Circles. And I look forward to supporting you in 2020. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Bye for now.